Hey guys, welcome to The Money Zone. I'm your host, Felicia Day, the Accountability Accountant Guys, and I'm just so excited to be on to on tonight with you guys. We're going to have fun tonight, guys. On tonight's show, guys, we're going to talk about all the tax myths that you guys have heard. Like, we're going to debunk quite a bit of y'all tax myths and have a little bit of fun guys so i'm excited we on beltway radio guys so if you want to see my screen or anything that i'm sharing i think you want to head over to youtube which is beltway radio like and subscribe to subscribe to 
um, their channel. Um, if you want to kind of be a part of tonight's show when we talk about those myths and things. If you don't know who I am, I'm Felicia the accountability accountant. I help small businesses and individuals save money on their taxes and build generational wealth and scale and grow profitable businesses guys and on tonight's show we're going to kind of do just that we're going to debunk some of those tax myths that you guys have because let's really be honest y'all think y'all can claim everything everybody y'all think y'all can claim everything i don't care what i say or anybody else say because y'all didn't seen it on a gram or because you didn't heard such and such said they did this you guys take that as face value so on tonight's show we're going to talk about some of those myths so guys what we're going to do we're going to take a quick little break during this time if you can share the video if you're watching us on any of the social media platforms if you're watching us on youtube please like um the video and subscribe to the channel grab your pen Grab your paper and whatever libation you have tonight. Well, hopefully you shouldn't be getting drunk on Tuesday. So get your tea or your water, girl. Um, yeah, and let's rock this thing on out, guys. We'll be right back. Hey guys, hey guys, welcome back to the Money Zone. I'm your host, Felicia Day, the accountability accountant, guys. And we're about to talk about some of them day going tax myths that you guys have really been trying to like get away with or hoping that the IRS approved this. So, number one tax myth that we have to debunk that you guys cannot claim is your pets. Like, okay, if you are deaf or blind and you have to have like a service animal then yes, you, you you can deduct your medical the expenses that you incur for your service dog. But if you don't need a service dog, just you as a perfectly fit, normal human being with no medical issues, no boo, no, no bro, no, mm -mm, no, no, no. You cannot deduct your pet on your taxes. Now, if you are a small business owner, right? and you are in a high crime rate and you purchase a like a protective dog right for your shop for your location or something like that um not a personal dog there should be a distinct difference between the dog that's used for the business to, for protection and your personal family dog okay so the dog that you would invest to protect your location for your business can be a business write-off but that's it if you are a regular healthy person guys you cannot write off your pet so please it stop trying to stretch it and stop complaining talking about oh my gosh my dog cost me a lot of money i wish i can write it off girl yes i had a dog too yes i had a dog too they are very expensive but that is a choice of yours to have that dog so number one if you have a pet you cannot write it off as a dependent like it's your child 
but if you needed the dog for service purposes because you are deaf or blind or your doctor recommended it, you possibly can deduct that as a medical expense. And if you need that dog for protection for your business, then um, you will be able to also write a portion of that off as well. Okay. All right. The second myth we are going to write um, the bunk is that you guys can write off your life insurance. I've been seeing this quite a bit. Oh my gosh, it's insurance for last day. It says that you can deduct your insurance. Yes, but not your life insurance, okay? As a business, you really will have to be strategic in being able to even write off a portion of life insurance. But for you being the business owner and the individual that's filing the taxes and probably the only employee of your business, um, no, 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 you may not get away with having life insurance as a deduction which is not but a regular person cannot write off life insurance at all so a business can write off key person life insurance depending on the circumstances a normal person no guys you cannot write off your life insurance it's a benefit they already don't tax your um your beneficiaries and see guys think about this when your beneficiaries receive your portion of life insurance, right? When you die, they're not taxed on that money. So now you want to be able to write off the expense for the life insurance and your um, beneficiaries don't take pay any taxes. Okay. Nope. The IRS said, nope, that won't fly. Okay. So you cannot write off your life insurance if you are a regular person. Now a business can write off key personnel life insurance, but it has to be some strategy um, behind that. Okay. So the third one is that you don't have to file if you don't want to. Okay. Oh, this tax system is voluntary. I know such and such. I saw on YouTube said that it's against the law for the IRS to be taxing you and for you to be paying taxes according to the constitution. This, 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 this. That's what people are saying, right? Do not fall for that, guys. That is not true. You, you have to file a tax return in two scenarios, okay? Number one scenario, if you are a small business owner and your business makes $600, okay, and your expenses are only $200, then that means you have net self-employment income. If you have net self-employment income above $400, you are required to file a tax return. If you work a normal nine to five, right, and you make above the standard deduction. What is the standard deduction for this year? I think it's 12,900. Wait a minute, hold on. I should even know this, y'all, but my brain is warped right now, okay? Let me see, I think it was right. Okay, yeah, 12,950 for the standard deduction. If you make under $12,950 on a W-2, then yes, you are not required to file, but that's it, okay? Anything above that, anything... Um, anything above those two thresholds, you have to file a tax return. If you sell your home, sell a home, you have to file a tax return. So really guys, the tax system isn't voluntary. It's not because you don't have to file a tax return because you don't want to. That's not how it works. What it was really saying is that the credits that you guys decide to take on your tax return, the deductions that you guys decide to take on your tax return and those business expenses and things like that that you decide to take on your tax return are voluntary you don't have to take the child tax credit if you don't want to you don't have to take the head of household standard deduction if you don't want to okay you don't have to um get the educational um tuition credit if you don't want to so the tax system itself is not voluntary. The credits and the deductions and things that you guys um, claim are voluntary and they're basically off your decision-making, okay? You don't have to take it. Like you can choose to take standard deduction if you itemize. 
you know, so that's voluntary. But you filing is not voluntary. So don't fall for that bait. And a lot of you guys, I'm glad I'm even bringing that up because a lot of you have made money from your side gigs, okay? Um, and you haven't filed that income. So what I just said applies to you. If you have a profit of $400 or more in your business, right, you will pay over tax on that income. So the IRS want to see that on your taxes, okay? If you've worked and did hair or babysat, you are supposed to be filing a tax return if the income from that uh, business netted more than $400. You guys have to file. It's no way around it. So just not filing, don't work, okay? All right, so guys, if you're just coming in in today's show, we're talking about the myths that you guys have heard online about, oh, you can claim your pet. Oh, you can do this. Oh, you can do that. This, this, and that. So we talk about all of those myths that you guys have heard. I'm debunking some of them and giving you guys some insight um, regarding some of them, how you may be able to strategically be able to take advantage of those deductions in certain situations, okay? Um, so if you're interested in knowing all about the myths and you want to catch the replay, uh, which will be on my YouTube channel, which is Falasha Day TV within about 48 hours of tonight's live show, okay? Alrighty, guys. So the third myth that I'm going to debunk is all my hustlers, all my pimps, drug dealers. I was about to rap. I couldn't even get my little rap out. All my pimps, drug dealers, my hustlers, all of you guys that's making money on the street, illegal money, my scammers. Um, this is for y'all. If you're a scammer, a drug dealer, if you do anything shady, 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 then guess what? You have to file a tax return, boo. You have to claim that scam income. You have to you have to claim that drug money. You have to claim that prostitution money, guys. You have to claim all of it. So if you're doing any illegal activities, okay, you don't have to tell me. You don't have to admit anything while we're live today. You know who you are. If you're doing anything illegal, even if you're doing um paperwork fraud so let's say if you're doing some pay stubs let's say if you're doing bank statements let's say if you doing if you did those ppp scams whatever scams y'all didn't did whatever illegal activities you didn't done did right you have to file that income on your tax return most criminals actually go down because they fail to file their returns with their criminal income OK, it's against the law. That's how they're able to get a lot of these Rico cases. And remember, that's how they got Al Capone, because he did not claim all of his street money. So if you in the streets, if you're a banger, if you're a scammer, whatever you are, right, you still need to be filing your tax return. And for all of my exotic dancers, all of y'all, only fans, my porn stars, you guys need to be filing your taxes, too. You should not be dancing, making two, three hundred thousand dollars a year, and you um, don't have nothing to show for it, and you're not claiming things. You guys are really messing yourself up if you're in the adult industry. But for all my scammers and stuff, y'all doing that to make sure they're not going to be able to use that against you once you go down, okay? Because once you guys have those criminal charges and they bring it up and then they follow the money trail, then the IRS will be knocking nicks. So if you file the income right? Then you'd be good to go. And see, let me be very honest with you. When I'm really putting this in context, guys, and here go my brain working, the IRS don't know that you're a criminal. That's why it may seem very strange for them to be asking you guys to claim your scamming money and your drug money, because literally the IRS don't know that you're a scammer. The IRS don't know that you're in a block, okay? Now, if you have some criminal investigations happening or something like that, then yes, they may find out about it later. But when you originally file your tax return with your scamming income and all of that stuff, the IRS don't know that you are a scammer unless it's you have an active investigation or they've got an inquiry as to what your income was the years before. But if you've been staying off the radar 
you're like any other business person. So don't get yourself caught up by not filing your tax returns, thinking that they know you're a banger. They may not know you're a banger if you've been able to stay on the low. So all of y'all with those illegal activities, make sure you are filing your tax returns. All my um, sex workers, make sure you guys are filing um, your taxes as well. Because look, let me be honest with you guys. And I said this before, but I think I need to repeat this for all of my newcomers. The IRS, if you were to ever get on, they, um, on their radar, they know how to um, figure out intrinsically how much money you're making. Okay. So many of you have car loans. Many of you have apartments. Many of you have homes, right? So in situations like this, if you are an exotic worker, I mean, a sex worker or something, and you're not filing that, but you living good, boo, you're really messing yourself up. Here's why. On your credit report, it shows your monthly payments. And if you haven't missed the payment, that's showing to the IRS and everybody that, oh, okay, this money must be coming in. Oh, girl, I have been able to make maintain that $1,000 monthly payment. However, when the IRS pulled your return, your income for the year said 5000 but when they started to do the investigations, they realized that you have a car note of $1,000 per month that you haven't missed a payment, trigger number one. So automatically, the IRS is going to assume that whatever payments that you didn't miss is the actual income that you're hiding from them. And at that point, you have to prove it to yourself. And I've been in that situation, excuse me, guys. With the client, when the IRS was like, okay, well, based on the data that we pulled, it was, is it Lexus Nexus? I think they pulled it from Lexus Nexus. One of them, I think it was Lexus Nexus, if I'm not mistaken. They was like, okay, based on Lexus Nexus, this is a criminal investigation too. Based on Lexus Nexus, this is what we got. We realized that based on your assets, they show everything. I was like, oh, that was, my first, that was one of my first big criminal audits, y'all. I was like, oh. That's when I knew that all of my um, premonitions of how they're able to figure out our income show face in that audit, literally. So if you a banger, scammer, um, the IRS don't know that that's what you do. OK, so, you know, especially if you're off the radar, file your tax returns, do your due thing, you know, and it's not money laundering if you're not putting the money into another, another business or something. OK, just just make your money. File your taxes, okay? If you get caught up, you got caught up on something else. It won't it won't be your taxes, okay? If you are one of my sex workers, right, then you want to make sure that you are filing because y'all make a lot of money. Y'all make a lot of money and it's not going to stay off the radar, guys. And remember, I said this in my live, oh no, I didn't put this content out yet. Okay, no, no, I did this for one of my recordings. Okay, so you guys are going to see one of my recordings that go out over the course of the week where I talked about the IRS beefing up their requirements for tip workers. Now, they didn't necessarily specify if they were, if it was going to be a broad, broad band of all tip workers, meaning exotic dancers and, you know, those type of situations, but they are focusing on enhancing the regulations for tip workers. And exotic dancers are kind of considered tip workers or independent, con no, actually tip workers, because they'll get the W-2 and then whatever their tip income is, they report that. Yeah. So exotic dancers, they're tightening up the policies and stuff for you guys as well. So you you want you want to start getting it together, guys. Illegal activities, exotic dancers. Yes, you guys have to file. Only fans, prostitution. I'm talking about if you're a street walker, you have to file. Okay, guys. I know this was a lot. Some of you may have gotten uncomfortable. Like, why are you talking about that? Yeah, they're people too. Okay. All right. So this is the last um, myth that we're going to talk about before I go on my little break, guys. Um, so this myth is bartering. So bartering is the concept, and it's an amazing concept, guys, but so many people have gotten this bartering concept um, misconstrued, thinking that, oh, just because you barter and you didn't receive money, then you don't have to do anything with your taxes. Not true. So first of all, bartering is when there's no monetary exchange or no um, asset, nothing with a monetary equivalence, right? But you guys exchange services. So like, for example, I do taxes for you and you do a wig for me. They exchange, especially if the price is almost the same. 
Or let's say your girlfriend got a boutique and she sell clothes and you sell wigs. You get $600 for clothes and she gets $600 for wigs or whatever the case may be. That is bartering. Or your attorney do trademarks and you do catering and you cater her next event that's $1,200 in value and she do your trademark, which is $1,200 in value to her. That's bartering. No money has been exchanged, but services have been exchanged. Guys, if you barter any services, the value, okay, that y'all exchange for is you have to include that in your income. It will be taxed. So if um, if you bartered the service from her and it's $1,000, then you have to claim that as um, $1,000 in income. Because all they have to claim is expense because you would have spent it either way. So if you're doing any type of bartering transactions, guys, you have to claim that stuff is income just like everybody else, okay? And the tricky part about it is when you go to write off, let's say, for example, if the um, product that you exchange was not a physical service, but an actual product, you cannot write off. It, it, the actual value of the product that you barter. So you will have um, some profit there. So there's always some profit in some type of way. I'm not going to say that. You may have to pay taxes on services that you barter with people with. Okay. So be mindful. Those are supposed to be tracked. And if no money is not coming out of your hand, it's no expense, okay? But the, the exchange of product is income, okay? All right, guys. So what we're about to do, we're about what? We're going into our break. So if you enjoyed the first segment of tonight's show, please, if you want to see um, my screen, especially going forward, because I think Beltway Radio have their um, YouTube channel up, head over to Beltway Radio, like and subscribe like today's video, subscribe to the channel. If you want to catch the replay, don't forget within 48 hours, the replay will be on my YouTube channel, which is Felicia Day TV within 48 hours of tonight's show. Um, so guys, what I'm about to do, I'm going to take a quick little break. Like maybe we'll be back in like three minutes. Okay. And then we'll be right back. realize how much help that I needed when I started my business. Like I knew I couldn't do it by myself, but I didn't know to the extent of um, how much help I would need. You know, so this is why your accounting is so important because it's the difference between you being a one man band for the rest of your life and you being able to hire your next right hand man. And see, so for example, like me, I'm a service provider. So if I hire another individual in my office, the next thing would be someone that has a CPA or an enrolled agent, someone with the credentials of my caliber, right? So I can now officially somewhat delegate everything to them, right? And so it costs to hire an accountant. It costs. I'm going to have to pay them no less than maybe 70 Gs. So while all of you entrepreneurs thinking that it's so easy to really grow your business, now I already have a hundred grand in payroll already. So when I add on another 70, so that's now taking my total payroll to have a quarter of a million dollars. And so while you small businesses think that it's a game to level up and grow your businesses, when it's time for you to sacrifice that 70,000 to pay somebody, you're not willing to do so. So you stay where you are.
you don't like yourself, you don't think you're cute enough, or if you don't have enough money, what could we do to change you? Nobody right now, will we are in this day and time, should be hating on nobody. Or should be judged. All of us have the same 24 hours. All of us have the same opportunities. Now, the moment that Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube start charging us to use their platform is the moment that we all can say we have the same opportunity. But right now, we all have the same opportunity. So what is stopping you from doing what you need to do with us? What's stopping y'all? First of all, stop watching everybody. Because when you are not where you are, where you want to be in life, guys, it's a difference between watching people to get motivation and watching people and start to develop hate. Because you guys can watch, 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 watch so much to the point where you forget that for you to get to that level, you have to do work so you can get to hate. You can get to hate. So what is it? What do we need to do? And I think the first thing we all need to do is accept accountability. Accept accountability for where you are right now. If you're not happy, write down why. If you're not financially stable, write down why. So like me, I had to do I'm pretty consistent, I'm pretty disciplined, but not as bad as consistent and disciplined as I could be. So that's what I got okay, be more consistent. Be more disciplined. Hey guys, welcome back to the Money Zone. I'm your host, Felicia Day, the accountability accountant guys. And on today's show, guys, you missed out on segment one. We talked about some of the myths that you guys have been just so really curious about and wondering if you can, you know, take those things as deductions. So, but before I move into um, segment two of tonight's show, I would like to clear up one more myth, uh, which is the myth that if you file an extension, that it gives you an extension to pay the taxes due. So let me just clear that up. That is not true, okay? If you file an extension, the extension only gives you an extension to file the tax return. It does not give you an extension on the money that's due to the IRS. So if you are the type of person that normally always owe, you really don't want to just file an extension. You want to actually file the extension and also pay as much as you possibly can with the extension because the extension does not what? Extend the payment. It only extends the time to file, okay? So even if you get an extension and you only owe $1,000, right? That means you will begin to accrue entrance and penalty charges on the $1,000 that you owe, okay? So if you know you're going to owe or you're not sure you're getting closer every year to you owing, then you don't want to wait to the last minute and just simply submit a, an extension. You want to actually attempt to see what your tax liability would be and then file the extension on time, but try to make a payment with the extension, okay? So I did want to talk about that. Um, before I proceed to uh, my next topic, guys. Um, so let me be very honest. I know you guys been hearing all the time, build generational wealth, this, 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 you know, all this stuff. I want to let you guys know that you as a nine to fiver, you as a W-2 employee, you can also build generational wealth, okay? And the tax system actually rewards you from building generational wealth by simply just contributing to your retirement account. This year, I've made it my initiative, which I've always done that, but I'm doing it so effortlessly now, persuading clients to start really contributing to their retirement account. And I'm giving them better scenarios and basically saying that, guys, we're not getting any younger. I'm 37. I'll be 38 this year, right? We're not getting any younger. Um, and if you've been watching me for some time, you didn't age with me like nine, eight years, you know, so we're not getting any younger now. We have to think about this. If the tax system rewards you for, for investing into your retirement plan, why aren't you taking advantage of it? And so what I found is that some people, 
Do not take advantage of the retirement plans that they have on their job because the job doesn't match them anything. But I need us to put this in context. Does the job have to match you for you to want to and take advantage of contributing to your retirement plan for your retirement? Is it you retiring or is it your job retiring? Because if it's you retiring, right, then you need to also be contributing regardless of if somebody is matching you. So first of all, if you are on any job and they actually have a retirement plan, it is in your best interest. Forget about what they're matching you to invest into your retirement account. And if you can afford it, max it out. Some of you are saying, oh, well, I am only contributing up to the amount that my job match. So now you're telling me that because you're getting a dollar for every dollar that you contribute in your retirement account, that the moment that you don't get that dollar matched again is the moment you don't want to contribute to your retirement for you to have money when you get old. Like we have to start putting this in context, guys, because many of you are not even you're, you're Googling tax strategies. And I don't want to even bust nobody bubble or laugh at you. But girl, we got to get a, like I was about to say something else. I, I should say what I see, what I want to say. But this is the thing, guys. I don't want to laugh at y'all, but we got to be really honest with ourselves. Y'all sitting there Googling tax strategies. You're paying for courses and doing all of this nonsense, but you haven't even contributed to your retirement account. But you're talking about you want to build generational wealth. You can't build generational wealth if you're not prepared for your retirement. Guys, this is what I'm saying. Like, stop falling for this bait that we can skip steps to generational wealth. Yeah, you might have your life insurance, but guess what? Don't you got to survive while you're old and aging? Where is that money going to come from? Your retirement. So we got to start thinking for ourselves. And stop waiting for a handout. If your job is not matching you, um, your retirement account or whatever you contribute, that's not that shouldn't stop you from contributing to your plan because they're only doing that to incentivize you to do that. So you're telling me that when they're not able to give you that extra dollar, it's not enough incentive incentive to know that oh, I need to put this away so I can have money when I'm sixty five. I need to put this money away so I don't have to work when I'm 70. Why do your job have to incentivize you to do that? So that's the first thing I really need us to start really doing right now is really looking at ourselves and asking us those hard questions. Why are we looking everywhere else outside of the immediate resources that we have to build this fun dream of building generational wealth? Like I'm actually tired of it because so many people have robbed you guys blind and i'm seeing it on your tax returns on your schedule c's and you guys that make money but you're paying thousands of dollars for coaches i'm seeing your retirement accounts being um empty because you guys are investing in programs and stuff i'm seeing it and it's it's disgusting now um, to me, and I'm afraid that many of you are going to look up in 15 years and you're not going to have a pack to piss in because you just squandered away, squandered away your retirement account to try to build that business that you wasn't serious about and you never continued to contribute to your retirement account because you are slowly keep taking money out. So by the time you blink in 15 years, you guys will not have nothing to live on. And already, guys, and we said this in our discussion about two weeks ago, they're changing the policies. You know, they want to get rid of the Social Security Fund. And for them to get rid of the Social Security Fund, that's why they came up with this Secure Act 2.0, where they're beefing up their initiatives to get you guys to contribute to their retirement accounts, to your retirement accounts, because they know that Social Security is not going to be there. So right now, I am speaking to the individuals that may not be able to get Social Security when it's time. But because you guys don't want to take advantage of the first wealth building tax strategy and the first tax savings strategy, which is contribute to your retirement plans. Don't wait for a match. 
Don't wait for, oh my gosh, I'm about five years from retirement and I don't have nothing. I don't want you guys to hit it when it's too late. I'm, I'm speaking for a reason, guys. And if you're new to me, I don't just be talking out the, the tip of my tongue just to be talking. I'm talking from real experiences and I'm talking from a heart that cares. And I want you guys to be very comfortable when you retire. I don't want you guys to have to work when you retire, but it requires you to take the steps now to contribute. So first things first, guys, the first wealth building thing that all of you guys need to do is stop paying for all these damn courses and start contributing to your retirement plan and max them out if you can afford to do that. Because remember, the tax system rewards you from, for doing that, okay? Depending on your income, you will qualify for the retirement savings credit, okay? Also, for every dollar that you contribute into your 401k or your 403b, right, or your TSP, right, whatever dollar you contribute to the max, it reduces your taxable income. So if you make $80,000 and you contribute the max of, let's say, $20,000 just to keep it simple, then the IRS is only going to tax you on $60,000 of income. So that means you will have $20,000 that you're socking away into your 401k and into your 403b tax-free at the moment. So you are deferring the taxes on your 401k. Now, with your 401k, your 403b and stuff, yes, you will have to pay taxes on that money when you pull it out. But I don't want you guys to be focused on that. What I want you to be focused on is that, girl, boy, you have some money to pull out. My fear is that the majority of you guys will not have no money to pull out. So I would rather for you to not to say, because I know what's going to happen when my team break this video out. Some of y'all will comment and be like, oh, but you're going to have, I'm still going to have to pay money on that, pay taxes on that. Oh, Falash, I don't want to hear none of that. I need you guys to have money when you retire. What? I would rather for you to pull out $100,000 when you're 60 years old and you got $100,000 and you roll now, you like, if Felicia Day didn't tell me, I would have had this. And you have to pay IRS 10500 Okay, pay them their money. Pay them their money. But at least you got 90000 in the pocket. Some of you are not going to have the 90000 because you're concerned about the $10,000 in taxes that you're going to have to pay when you withdraw. Now, if your job don't have a 401k or 403b or anything like that, then you can set up a Roth or something, okay? And the Roth is after taxes. So when you guys go to pull your money out, when you retire, you won't have to pay taxes. But the problem with the Roth is that the contribution limits are very low, okay? You can only contribute up to like $6,000 a year into your Roth. So it has a slow growth, um, slow investment um, pool, but it's tax-free. So here's the thing, guys, before we close out today, I want you to put this in perspective. Instead of searching and searching and searching for every tax strategy under the sun, over the book, the first thing we need to do is look at ourselves, look at our lifestyles, look at our situations. Do you have a retirement account on your job? Do they have a plan? If they do have a plan and you can set up an account, get it. That's the first thing I need you to do. The second thing I need you guys to do is evaluate your lifestyles. Some of you are heavy in church. You do a lot, okay, for your community and nonprofits and things. And you're you're putting money back out into these nonprofits and everything. Those things might be a write-off, okay? Especially if you're working with a 501c3 um, nonprofit, your um, contributions to that program that they're having might be a write-off. The miles that you drove to help the other kids, the youth program that you're working with, that might be a write-off. So before you guys just start really making these major investments, trying to save money on taxes, the first thing we need to do is invest into your retirement accounts. If they don't have one in your job, you can go to any bank. Sorry to say banks after that Silicon Valley bank thing. And I might talk about that, but it's a lot. I've been doing a lot of research though. So I may have even just stumped that. So yeah, and contact your bank. Um, to see if they have a program, okay? And if you don't have a financial advisor, you can message me and I can refer you to the financial advisors that I refer my clients to, okay? 
Um, the second thing you want to do is look at your lifestyle. Some of you have expenses that we can write off or have a certain lifestyle where you contribute to charity a lot, but you don't write it off. Um, some of you may say, oh, I don't want to write it off. I did it from my heart. Yes, that's cool. God knows you did it from your heart. But the IRS says you can take advantage of it. Take advantage of it on your taxes. God is not going to punish you because you wrote off the $15,000 that you gave your church last year. Okay. Actually, our God, he going to want you to take advantage of it. Because first of all, we shouldn't even be paying tax the way we paying this. <laughs> we shouldn't be doing what we're doing right now. So he's going to want you to get your little tax credit for your um, from the heart contribution. So look at yourself right now, guys. We are in a state where we really do need to compress our spending and really start to tighten up our um, spending habits. The government really don't want to be honest with us and say if we're in a recession, but I have to be honest, guys, we are in a recession. Um, based on what I've just recently been reading, they said that it's a possibility that uh, uh, 186 other banks may potentially close. And I have to be honest with you guys. Here's And this is between us. Real hardcore talk. America is in trouble. It's not just you, it's not just me, it's not just your neighbor, it's not just the workers. America is in trouble. When we, and I know y'all going to hate this when I say this, Donald Trump had a mission that he was not able to fulfill. He really wanted to bring our manufacturing back into our country. Um, however, he was unsuccessful in doing that. I can't speak on why and how second term or whatever the case may be. I don't care about that, but he was not able to achieve that. So what's happening is that we're making banks are only making money off our deposits and all of, and off the gains of the loans and the stock market. It's, it's, it's too risky right now. We have nothing that we can show value of here in this country. So we as a country are in a huge issue. We have to start bringing back manufacturing. And also, if you are a trade worker, meaning you are a plumber, you're electrician, you are a foreman, your time is coming. You guys are going to end up being some of the most successful people on this country in this country because any job that AI can replace will be replaced. Okay. And AI cannot replace coming into my home and fixing my garbage disposal like my plumber do or come into my home and fix a leak. So if you are a young man or a man that really trying to transition and you're really good with your hands, if I were you, I will knuckle up and study the trades. And I've been asking you guys to do this for years. Um, but now I'm bringing it back because of where the technology is. We have no choice. If you know of anyone, um, really encourage them to go into the trades. And if they really want to do their due thing while they're in the trades, start to figure out how they can use AI or maybe build something um, that may be life changing or life altering for their industry. Because right now we need all of the plumbers, our foremans, and we need them. And in the black community, we're far from few. Like my plumber is black and he is overwhelmed. And I ask him all the time, well, where are the young guys? Why are you not teaching nobody? He said, Falashe, they fall off. They fall off after three weeks, four weeks. They can't handle the work. They can't handle the work. Guys, I have to be honest with you. The plumbers, um, all of my four, all my trade workers, you guys are going to be very successful soon. I'm talking about a minimum of probably making 160. Some of you guys are already making about a hundred thousand, but y'all are going to start making mm, a good 150 minimum soon. Um, so I encourage anybody to really go into the trades if you know people. Okay, guys, so it's, it's time for us to start buckling up and, and tightening up. I personally don't recommend nobody go back to get no degrees. Go get some trade certifications and things like that, guys. Learn. And I know it's difficult to say learn how to use your hands, but any job that requires physical hands and great area um, um, anal analyzing, great area reviewing, whatever it is, right? Your job will be fine. But if you're just a consultant, 
if you're just a coach, if you're just, um, I don't know, it's going to be a lot of jobs that go away, guys. And I don't want it to be yours. So, guys, I have to get ready to close out. We're done. Two minutes to go. So, guys, if you enjoyed today's show, um, definitely check out the replay on my YouTube channel, um, which is Philosophy um, TV. Um, I'm going to probably have my team maybe put together maybe like some trades for you guys and then maybe put it in a guide or something. So that's why I'll have my team do that. So, Grace, when you watch this video, have Ken create a list of all of the trades in the U.S. and then let us post it on the um, on our guide. Okay, so I'm going to have my team do it. And I just told them to do it through the video. Um, okay, so guys, today's show was really, really good. If you just catch, if you're catching a replay, I hope you enjoyed it. On the first segment, we talked about the tax myths. On the second segment, we talked about you, everybody else, starting from scratch, the first foundation of building generational wealth. And it starts with your retirement accounts. And then we ventured off into now where we are economically in this country and me advising you guys on really venturing into the trades and really, you know, encouraging your young men and your husbands and things like that to go get that foreman degree or whatever that is, plumbers, licensed electricians, engineers, you know, go get those certifications because we're going to need them and they're going to be the richest soon. Okay, them doctors and accountants and attorneys were never going nowhere, but everybody else that's not within that doctors, attorneys, um, accountants type of range, they're going to be gone. Those jobs are going to be gone. Okay, so guys, I love you so much. I wish you guys the absolute best. And remember, everything you guys want in life starts with your decision to make it change today. And whatever you do today, like my sister always say, whatever you do today impacts your tomorrow. So if you decide to watch today's show and don't do a damn thing, don't say I didn't teach you. But if you watch today's show and you implement tomorrow, I'll be very proud of you. You'll be proud of yourself and you'll make impact and make some change into your life. So guys, I love you so much and I will see you.